Welcome back to McMaster University course Computer Science and Software Engineering 2FA3 Discrete Mathematics and Applications 2. I'm Bill Farmer and we're going to continue with the second topic of the course recursion and induction and we're going to look at the last kind of recursion and induction well-founded recursion and induction. So let's talk about what a well-founded relation is. So let R here be a relation on U. And we can say that an R minimum element is of a set, is some member of that set, which is Y here, such that there is no member that's related to that set. So there's no X that's related to Y. So in some sense, y is minimal. It's nothing else is related by this relation. Now, well-founded relations can be orders, but they don't have to be. They don't have to be in order. So, so we're actually generalizing the notion of order here. So we say that r is well-founded if every non-empty subset of u has an r minimum element. Um, and u r is well-founded if r is well-founded. And so we have some examples here. Uh, we've seen this one, natural numbers in lesson. That is also a well-order. And we've seen pairs of natural numbers in uh, lexicographical order. That's also a well-order. But here is a, a structure that's well-founded. The natural numbers with the relation the successor relation, which says that M is related to N if N is the successor of M. This is a well-founded relation, or this structure is well-founded, but it is not a well-order. It's not a well-order because it's not an order. It's not an order because it's not transitive. Transitive would, would mean this. This is true. And this is true. But this is not true. Maybe I should write it like this. This is not true. Because M, um, I should say, M plus 1 does not equal M plus 2. Okay, so. We talked a little bit before about uh, a relation being Noetherian. We can now talk about a Noetherian structure. So again, let's say R is a binary relation on U. And we'll say that a sequence of members of U is a descending sequence if it's written like this. So X1 is, re X1 is related to X0, X2 is related to X1, and so forth. And this structure, UR, is Noetherian if every descending sequence, R sequence of members, is finite. And we have this nice proposition. A structure is well-founded if and only if it is Noetherian. So Noetherian and well-founded, they say the same things in different ways. Okay, so I have a question here. Let's say R is a well-founded relation. Then R need not be irreflexive, asymmetric, transitive, or none of the above. I'll give you a moment to think about it. Okay, well, welcome back. So irreflexive means that we have this case. And R is well-founded. R needs to be irreflexive. Because if R is not irreflexive, then we are always going to have a minimum element. If I have just a set X, 
the minimum element is going to be x because x is related to x. So it, it does need to be a reflexive. Now asymmetric means that if this is true, then this must be true. So it can't be asymmetric, because if it's asymmetric, if it's, if it's asymmetric, not asymmetric, we have this situation. And that will give us an infinite descending sequence. And transitive, we know it need not be transitive because we just saw this example of the natural numbers with the successor relation, which is well-founded. But the successor relation is not transitive. So it needs to be irreflexive it needs to be asymmetric. It does not need to be transitive. Let's see, what did the question say? Then that need not be. So I actually wrote it the wrong way. It need not be transitive. Okay, so let's talk about well-founded recursion induction. So if we look at how we define a function using well-founded recursion, it's just the same way for natural number recursion. It's just the same way for ordinal recursion. The only difference is right here, the complexity that we have is going to be uh, a member of a well-founded relation, a well-founded structure, I should say. Uh, so instead of using the natural numbers or well-ordered, we use this. And here's the condition that must be true. Now, the well-founded induction principle looks like this. It's exactly the same as the ordinal induction principle. Instead of R here, I mean, we use R here instead of, of uh, less than. Otherwise, it's the same. And this demonstrates that well-founded induction is a generalization of ordinal induction and it's generalization of, of strong induction for natural number induction. Okay, so well-founded recursion and induction generalizes natural number recursion and induction, structural recursion and induction, and ordinal recursion and induction. And we have this nice result if UR is a strict total order, then UR is well-founded if and only if it is a well order. So when, we're taught, when we have total orders, total orders are well-founded if and only if they are well orders. Okay, so let's think about well-founded induction on the natural numbers. If we have the well-founded induction principle for n and less than. Less than is a well-founded relation. What we get here is this induction principle. This is exactly strong induction. So the well-founded induction principle for the natural numbers with strict less than is strong induction. Now the well-founded induction principle for the natural numbers with the successor relation is, is this and this is essentially the same as weak induction. So strong induction and weak induction are special cases of well-founded induction. Okay, so that completes our discussion about well-founded recursion induction. There's some things we're going to say now this, in summary. So when should you use different principles? Well, you should use natural number induction, weak or strong, to prove a statement that involves natural numbers or that requires a simple induction argument. You can use it 
when you have a situation that does not involve natural numbers, but you use natural numbers to make sure your recursion makes sense. You use natural numbers to prove whatever fact you want to prove about the situation you're in. So most of the time, the great majority of the time, when you're talking about recursion or induction, it's going to be natural number induction. But in computing, structural induction comes up quite often. So you use structural induction to prove statements in which the underlying values are members of an inductive set. This happens quite often. Now, ordinal induction is really rather rare. You use this to prove a statement that involves a well order or requires a complex induction argument. So in the future, if you're ever in a situation where you're trying to figure out, let's say, if some complicated loop actually terminates and you want to prove this by induction and it's complicated because the loop has loops within the loops within loops, you should be thinking, well, maybe I should try to prove this using ordinal induction. And finally, well-founded induction is the proof statements that involve a well-founded relation that is not a well-order. Because it's a well-founded relation that is not a well-order, you can't use ordinal induction. Uh, and in this case, you can use well-founded induction. Okay, the last topic I want to mention is something, a technique called strengthening the induction hypothesis. So sometimes when you're trying to prove a statement by induction, uh, it just doesn't work. The proof doesn't go through. The proof doesn't go through because your induction hypothesis is too weak. You need the hypothesis to say more and doesn't say enough. And so this, there's a strategy of strengthening the induction hypothesis. This way you can prove a stronger statement that results in a stronger induction hypothesis. So the idea is I have to prove something and my induction proof doesn't work, so I prove a stronger statement. The statement implies the statement I'm really interested in. You prove this stronger statement, and because it's a stronger statement, you get a stronger induction hypothesis. The induction hypothesis argument goes through. So I'm going to give you an example of this. This is from our exercises that you had, uh, one of the exercise problems. Every square number is the sum of two triangle numbers. And actually, there's a nice, simple, let's say, a nice, simple uh, proof of this. If I think of a square number, we can, a square, uh, if I think of a square number as being, let's say, 9 in this case, I'll put points in, in here. But if I put points like this, Those points are a triangle number. And guess what? The points remaining are a triangle number. So I can see this square number is a sum of two triangle numbers. And this is really, a, in a sense, a visual proof. You can see this would be true for any square number. It's going to be a sum of two triangle numbers. But if we try to prove this by induction, our proof fails. We can't prove it. It doesn't work. But we can prove a different statement. Every square number is the sum of two consecutive triangle numbers. Notice these are consecutive triangle numbers. I go from the blue to the brown by adding another line, this line. So if I prove the statement every square number is a sum of two consecutive triangle numbers, which is a stronger statement than the original one, I can prove that by induction because I get a stronger induction hypothesis. Because the induction hypothesis is going to say, that for when I'm trying to prove that this is for, from you know I'm trying to prove my property for n, n is some, um, n is the nth square number. I know it's going to be true for the n minus one, n minus two, n minus three. If I use strong induction for those uh, square numbers. Okay, so. I'm going to stop here, but let me just say one more thing about this. If you are proving something that you are pretty confident you should be able to prove by induction, and your proof doesn't work because it seems like you just don't know enough information, that is a sign that you should try to prove a stronger statement because that stronger statement will give you the induction hypothesis you will need.
Okay, thank you very much. And this completes our lectures for the second topic of this course, recursion and induction.